Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about gun laws and weapon laws in Germany because there's a lot of misunderstandings. Okay, let's start with the most interesting part, firearms. Now a lot of people in the US think that in Germany firearms are illegal and banned and can't be owned by citizens. Now that's nonsense. There's about a million legal firearm owners in Germany and altogether they have about 6 million fully licensed firearms. Basically the same type that you can have in the US. Like for example <coughs> my HK MP5, nice one. <laughs> or this pump gun, also a nice toy. Handguns are also fully legal, like this Ruger Super Red Hawk. Nice. My trusted Para Ordnance 1245. Always good to have. <laughs> One of my favorites is the original uh, Walter PP. It's really a nice gun. It's really, I mean, production qualities are superb. Really nice. Even tougher stuff like this Desert Eagle isn't a problem at all. 50 caliber magazine. <laughs> That's a heavy gun. Wow. <laughs> now, of course, you can't just go into a gun store and buy a weapon like this. You have to have a permit. I happen to have five of those because you can only get eight guns per license. So if you, if you have more than eight guns, like I currently have 34 on my licenses, you need more. I have five of them, one has still a few entries left. Now how do you obtain a license like that? Well, it's not so hard. If you want a gun, you can get it. You have to invest a little bit into learning and you probably have to pass an exam to prove that you know enough about guns. And you have to have a reason for applying for a firearm. Now what are these reasons? Well, there's basically three of them. There's some more exceptions, but the most common types is three of them. You have to be a member of a shooting club, so it's a sport for you. And then you can pretty much get any gun that you want because there are so many disciplines that you will find the right one for the gun that you want to shoot. And you have to practice for a while, like a year or so. And of course, uh, you have to have a, an absolutely clean criminal register. Common type number two is a hunter. If you uh, learn about hunting, you have to go to a class and you have to pass an exam. But after you've passed it, you are okay to buy as much as uh, the two handguns and as many long guns as you want. The third major type of license is the collector's license. If you are a collector, you have to prove that it's serious and you also have to define the area of your collection. But then you're pretty much allowed to buy as many of those guns that fit into your collecting category as you want to and as you can afford. There are people that have hundreds of guns on their collector's license. All right, so you can own all these guns. It's possible, it's not hard to do. But what can you do with it? Well, first of all, you can of course take them to uh, the place where the purpose is. So if you are a sportsman, you have to bring it to a certified range and then you can practice and you can participate in tournaments and all that. If you are a hunter, you can of course take it into your hunting area and then hunt with it. That's also fully okay. But you can certainly not just take it into the next bar or uh, you know go through the mall with it that's absolutely impossible for that you would need a special license an additional license and that license is like a carry permit in the US is almost impossible to get for someone outside of the security industry can you shoot these firearms onto your own ground no even if it's outside of the city limits there's no way you have to go to a certified range but don't forget germany is a very densely populated country so it would be catastrophic if people would be allowed to shoot out in the woods. If you are a licensed firearms owner, you must store the guns safely when you're not personally handling them. 
and therefore you need to have a certified safe, something like this here. I actually have several of those. And store them safely as long as you're not using them. Okay, so you have to keep the uh, firearms under lock and key in case um, you are not home and or you're not using them or not cleaning them or whatever. But that makes perfect sense because otherwise kids can find them, you know, burglars can find them and steal them and do all kinds of nasty things with it. So I think it makes total sense to force people to store these guns safely when they're not in use. Then also there is this type of guns, firearms that are unregulated. This means you can buy them as long as you're 18 or older. And this includes like uh, models designed before 1870. For example, this uh, Smith carbine, which is 50 caliber. It's uh, of course percussion lock and um, it is even a breech loader. So you can breech load this with the cartridge and then it's a fine gun. And of course, you can also only shoot it at the gun range, but you can own it without any kind of permit. Next thing on our list is air guns, like this very cool Weihrauch HW100 with a very nice telescopic sight and a silencer. These guns are unregulated as long as they're under seven and a half joules, which may be around five foot pounds of energy. That's enough for some blinking fun. But of course, forget it for, you know, it won't cause any real damage. That's why they limited it to seven and a half rules. Now, of course, you can also get them in the unlimited version. This means they have like uh, sometimes over 50 joules, like 35 foot pounds of energy or so on. But then you need the same permit that you need for a firearm. This means you have to go through the year of practice and 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 you have to store them safely with the limited ones, no more than seven and a half joules. None of these rules apply. Same goes for pistols, like this very cool CO2 powered uh, gun that fires lots of uh, pellets and it does so with a very good accuracy, but of course limited to seven and a half joules. And I don't think that this one is even available in a stronger version since, yeah, of course, it's limited. Then we have blank firing guns, like this. Walter Big Boar, it's uh, without a doubt a copy of the 1911 uh, design. And somehow it works like it, not quite, but somehow. This fires 9mm blanks or tear gas. It, it works like a normal firearm, really, same kind of deal. Uh, of course, it's much more cheaply made and it's also not as expensive. The tear gas in it is effective, but of course, uh, you have to take care to uh, not shoot against the wind, otherwise, you're gonna suffer. <laughs> now, for these, you don't need a permit to buy those. If you're 18 or older, you can just go into a gun store and buy them, or order them on Amazon even, I think. Um, but what you cannot do is you cannot take them out and carry them in public without a permit. That permit is a special permit that you can very easily obtain it's like if you don't have a criminal record, they're going to issue it to you just like that. You just have to pay a little bit of money and then it's yours. I think the main thing is that they want to know who is carrying such things with them or not. Defending yourself with a thing like this is kind of dangerous because you might run into a criminal that has a real gun and then it gets nasty because he will believe that you have a real gun too. And the consequences are potentially disastrous. And then we have this little device, which is uh, the, uh, what's its name, the JPX Jet Protector. It's a cool little device. Actually, it fires two shots, and these two shots are tear gas, of course. So you have this barrel set that really has uh, blanks in here, but it's, the blanks are pushing a piston, and the piston is pushing out the gas. Therefore, they are really silent, you don't hear much, but you can hit uh, on distances like 10 meters easily, so it's not a problem. And these, they look like a gun and they actually shoot the tear gas hard. But they are legal and you can carry them without any kind of permit. This is probably one of the most effective things you can carry in your handbag if you are afraid of being attacked. Ok, 
Okay, let's move on to bladed weapons. Knives. Like this beautiful Cold, cold Steel Roger 2. One of my favorites. Knives in general, as long as they're not fighting knives or combat knives, like uh, any type of kitchen knife and so on, is basically unregulated. So even a minor can buy it and use it. And of course, there's no limitation on this. As soon as it is meant for fighting or meant for combat, then this changes. So this would be a, a fighting knife. Then you have to be 18 or older to buy it and own it. And you can pretty much own any kind of knife. There are only a few exceptions of knives that are illegal. And those will be butterfly knives for whatever reason. You also can't have an automatic knife uh, with, uh, if it doesn't fulfill certain criteria that makes it legal. We'll come to that later. So all these knives you can legally own at this beautiful combat smashed, really razor sharp and heavy, beautiful. Or this very nice, nice Gerber knife that I really appreciate because it's well made and it's really a nice knife. It has this uh, lever that makes it easier to open it. Of course it locks in place. Very cool knife. And as I said, even automatic knives are legal in case they fulfill certain criteria. First of all, they have to open from the side. So out the front, automatic knives are illegal in Germany. If they open to the side, they still have to be sharp only on one side, so can't be sharp on both sides. That would make them illegal, even if the blade is short. All right, all these knives you can own, but can you take them with you if you go to the bar or whatever? Well, no, of course not. Not all of them. Some of them you can, it's just not a problem. So first of all, a folder, if it locks automatically when opened, like this one, and if it can be opened with one hand, and this is true for this one as well, then you cannot carry it legally into uh, public. The same goes for fixed knives if the blade length exceeds 12 centimeters, which is about 5 inches. So a uh, blade shorter than this is legal to carry. This one you have to keep at home. So this would be a good example for a knife. It's a beautiful Böker, really solid knife. Yeah, I love the thickness of the steel. And the blade length is just short enough to make it legal to carry it. A folder is legal to carry as long as it does not open with the one hand and locks in place automatically. So one hand opening is okay as long as it doesn't lock and a lock is okay as, yeah, as long as it doesn't open one-handedly. So if you take this cold steel Raja and remove this little notch here simply by uh, loosening this one screw, then you have to open it with both hands and then it is legal to carry. Well, big deal, because if you really want to do it, you can shake these open. <laughs> so even if you have a tool like this, with this a wonderful SOG automatic switch plier set, it has a blade, and this blade locks in place. It's actually a very sharp, hollow ground blade. It locks in place, so, but it, it doesn't open one-handedly. So this is legal to carry. God, I love playing with that thing. <laughs> now let's talk about muscle-powered weapons, like this uh, beautiful Liberty One hunting bow, super compact and really strong. This is one of the best bows I've ever shot. So of course it's, uh, it's a hunting bow, so it probably won't win the Olympics ever, but it is deadly accurate and very powerful. And unregulated. So this uh, kit is allowed to buy and own this. And you can shoot it in your garden, it is a lot of fun and it is absolutely non-restricted. Okay, crossbows. Like even this one with a magazine that I outfitted it with this, uh, with this seven shot magazine. Um, these are fully legal and you can carry them in public, there is no limit on them. The only thing is that you have to be 18 or older. So other than a bow, which is non-regulated, this is limited uh, uh, to adults. So as a minor, you cannot own one. Okay, last not least, slingshots. What else? <laughs> Slingshot like this, Rambone, even with these very powerful full butterfly bands on them, that can cause a lot of damage, but it's totally unregulated. This means minors can own it, you can carry it in public, you can shoot it in your garden. If the landowner permits it, you can even go and shoot in the woods if you want to. Of course, as long as you hurt, anyone, then uh, you won't get into any issues. 
Now there is one exception, and this is uh, for braced, arm braced slingshots. Those are the types that really, you know, have a brace for your forearm so that the wrist is not under, under uh, stress when you shoot. And those are totally illegal in Germany. You cannot own them, not even if you have a gun license. They are banned. Uh, the reason for this is because in the 70s we had a lot of demonstrations in Germany and the demonstrant had, demonstrants had these cheap arm braced Chinese slingshots and they shot with the small steel boards against the police and they actually managed to crack a few visor shields. And um, the, the big thing is that the press made fun out of them because the demonstrants would go and the policemen would all hop away out of the line of fire, you know, heavily armed with all their heavy shields and so on. So they called this the police dance. <laughs> and I guess that um, that kind of uh, fun the press made about police caused the politician to ban those arm braces. Now, that's not a problem because a well-designed slingshot with a low enough fork like this one doesn't really cause a lot of strain on the wrist, even if it's very heavy bands. So it's not a problem. Uh, it's, so the, uh, the uh, brace would only make it bulky and I think ugly. So uh, I don't really care much about that law. And this makes the slingshot one of the most effective unregulated weapons. Because, you know, my record shot with the slingshot is like 135 joules. That's more than 100 foot-pounds of energy. And uh, if you keep in mind that it's completely unregulated, that's a little bit of freedom left in otherwise uh, strictly regulated Germany. There are several things in Germany that are completely banned that you cannot own. Uh, for example, shuriken, like throwing stars, ninja stars. Those are illegal, I think, solely because Bruce Lee made them look so dangerous in his uh, films in the 70s. I don't think that there is a single criminal incident on record uh, where someone used a shuriken, because these things are really not that dangerous. They're toys, basically. But they banned them because they look so dangerous. Well done, Bruce Lee. <laughs> if you ask me what I personally think about gun laws in Germany, I think with some exceptions, it's actually a fair law. Um, if you keep in mind that you can get pretty much anything you want as long as you learn the trade and as long as you have a clean register, then I think um, that's a, a fair way to deal with things. Now, there is a few stupid exceptions, but, well, come on, these are politicians. Of course, uh, lots of things that they decide upon is nonsense. <laughs> so, I hope you like this because that's it for today. <laughs> Thanks and bye bye.